Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Start Prop Property Show. We are live every Wednesday between 12 and 1, right here on Radio Easter Fear, on Stasi, on Stalent, and on Mensa. And today we are going to be explaining to you um, the advantages and the possibilities of owning property by using the government subsidy scheme. So today we started our show as in the normal fashion with some local Cape jazz. And we had the benefit of Ernie Smith playing from his album, Child of Light, and the song was called Lonely. And I hope you guys are enjoying the show and enjoying the music and enjoying our programming. And as I said, today's program, we're going to look at the government subsidy scheme for first-time buyers. So if you're wanting to buy property, you're wanting to own a property, um, we're going to take you through the process uh, we're going to take you through the steps and show you how the government has come to the table in terms of the government subsidy for first-time buyers and how you can be a potential homeowner. So in the studio today on the property, Start Prop Property Show, we have uh, Mark Levita with us. Um, so hi to the guys. Hi, Mark. good afternoon, everybody. And it's great being here with everyone. And I'm sure this hour is going to fly by and that we can impart some knowledge and some information 
and we can assist you and empower you to become a homeowner, particularly those individuals who are buying a home from the, for the first time. So my name is Ivan Nietlung and I'm from Start Pro Properties and we are the property professionals. We're situated at shop number five in Rose Center in Blue Downs opposite the start opposite the pick and pay, Blue Downs pick and pay. You'll find our offices. So if you want any further information regarding home ownership, buying a property or even property rentals, you're welcome to come in and pop in at our offices or give us a ring. So if you've got any questions on the FLISP, today we're discussing FLISP, the government subsidy, please WhatsApp your questions to 064-536-9095. That's the uh, Radio Yestrafir uh, WhatsApp number. And we'll be happy and glad to answer any of your questions um, that you may have. So just to introduce the topic on the FLISP scheme, what does FLISP mean? And how do I benefit and how can I qualify under the FLIS scheme? So FLISP, as I said, is a product that government has made available to anyone who is buying a house for the first time. So there are certain conditions that we have to meet. There are certain things that we have to comply with to be able to qualify under the FLISP program. So I think the first thing we need to say is, is that your income, the first category of qualification is your income and your income to qualify under the FLIS program is that you must earn a, s a wage or a salary between 3,500 and 22,000 rand per month. So anybody who's earning between 3,500 and 22,000 rands a month, the government will assist you in purchasing a property. They will Give, they will make a contribution towards the purchase price. They will make a contribution towards those costs that we spoke about last week with Hendricks Incorporated Attorneys. And they explained to us what costs we have to pay when we acquire a property. So this FLIS program will assist you not only in um, covering a shortfall on the purchase price, it will also assist you in paying your fees. So the first qualification criteria is that we must qualify we must have a job, we must be working. So this is not the free housing that you get uh, with, a, with the gap housing. So this is for people who are employed and who are, but they're earning too little to be able to afford a house. They're looking for a property, but they're not in that category where they can qualify for the house. And so the FLISP program is a program that comes alongside you and supports you in owning a property. And as we said, if you're earning between 3,500 and 22,000 rand a month, then you qualify for the FLIS program. So that's the first uh, criteria there, how you must qualify. The second thing is, is that you must be a South African resident. So anybody who is a South, Afri who's a South African resident can qualify under the FLIS program. So if you're not South African, if you're from a foreign national, you cannot uh, make yourself available for the FLIS program. The third thing is that you must be 18 years and older. So only somebody who is mature in terms of the law can enter into contracts. So somebody who is a mondag, iemand wat mondag is, ne? over the age of 18 can qualify for the scheme. Mm -hmm. And then the next set of criteria is that you must be, either you must be married or living in a marital union or if you are si a single person, you must have dependents that are with you, that, are, that reside with you. So you are taking care of other people, you have dependents in your home, then you can qualify for this program. We're gonna talk more about um, the, the qualification and the, and the dependents later on through the show. And then the next set of criteria is that you must obviously, this is the first time you're entering into the market, you've not owned property before, this is the first time you're gonna become a home buyer. And so you are uh, wanting to come in and you could not have availed yourself of a former subsidy, you couldn't have had a subsidy before. And if you're buying jointly, neither of you must have been able to own, uh, have had own property before. Okay, so you must, it must, must really be a first time home buyer. So um, that really is the, the qualifying criteria for the FLISP, just to run through that quickly again. It's the first uh, rung of the ladder to qualify for the government subsidy. We're going to talk about what that subsidy is and how much it is. 
Um, the first thing that I must do is I must have a job. I must be earning between mm. 3,500 and 22,000 a month. I must be a South African resident. I must be over the age of 18. I'm, I'm either married. If I'm single, I've got dependents um, that, that depend on me, that live with me. And I must not have been, I must not have qualified for the, hu for the housing sub. Uh, I must not have had uh, access to a previous housing subsidy. It must be the first time that um, I'm qualifying under the scheme. Okay, so uh, we're going to just take a short break now. When we come back, we're going to start discussing these aspects and we're going to go through all of the detail of how you qualify, how long the application takes, uh, how much you can qualify for, what you can use the money for, and we'll discuss some of those issues um, as we proceed. So our next artist that we're going to look at, the, our local Cape Jazz artist, is Esther Miller. And Esther Miller's playing We've Only Just Begun, and that's from her album, mm -hmm. Say Hello Esther. So she's, Esther is a local Cape Town um, lady, and she's a local jazz artist, and we, we, we're giving credit to our local artists. We're giving a space, we're giving exposure to the, to the talent, the phenomenal talent that exists in the Western Cape, on the Cape Flats. And these artists are not always known or recognized. You hear the song say, wow, can that be local? It's as local as Start Prop, the property professionals. We're based right here in East River, and we're performing on Radio East River every Wednesday. Our property show, the property show bringing you information, bringing you uh, insight into the valuable asset of buying a house and how, you can, how we can get you to that point of owning the property. So we listen to Esther Miller, uh, It's Only Just Begun. We've only just begun For the rising sun We fly So many roads to choose We start off walking and learn to run And yes, we've just begun We've only just begun Signs along the way, yeah, yeah. talking it over, just the two of us working together day to day. Together, together, and when the evening comes, we fly so. Yes, we've just begun We've only just begun
Yes, everybody, welcome back to the Start Prop Property Show right here on Radio Yesterday Fair. And you're talking to Ivan Yetling, we're talking with Ivan Yetling from Start Prop. I'm the principal of Start Prop, and we're based at Shop Number no. 5, Rose Center, opposite Pick and Pay, Blue Downs Pick and Pay. And today, our topic of discussion is the FLIS program, the government subsidy FLIS. How can I use this subsidy to acquire property? So the government has set aside a sum of funds. The, the, there's money available. If, you are, if you've met that criteria that we went through in, earlier in the program, if you meet that criteria, you qualify for the government FLIS program. So how do I go about um, applying for FLIS? How do I go about um, knowing how much I can qualify for, uh, how I can access this fund and what I can buy for? So the process starts by, as I said, you will, the first thing I need to do is I need to have a job. I'll find a property that I like. I'll go to the bank and I'll see, uh, you know, if can I qualify for a bond. So the FLIS program will support the bond, will support the government, the, the bank's bond that you've got. So, for example, if you're buying a property of, let's say, um, we're talking Blue Downs now, we're talking yesterday for now. So if I'm here in Forest Village, then I'm here Forest Drive and on the corner of Forest Drive and Bob's Way. Uh, there's an area called Forest Village, then the houses are going for 360 and 400,000. So I'll go to the bank, and on my salary, are there, I qualify for, let's say, for an example, I qualify for 350,000. Now, if I apply for the FLISP, I can get up to 130,000 rand from the FLISP program, depending on what I qualify for. And remember, the, the minimum salary is 3,500, and the maximum that you can qualify for. If you uh, for the FLIS program is twenty two thousand. So if I go to the bank, bank says, "Look here, we will give you three hundred fifty thousand. I need four hundred and fifty thousand to buy this property." So I can now apply to the FLIS, and there's a very simple program. If you go onto the FLIS onto the, um, the Western Cape Government org site, and you type in the FLIS qualification, there's a table that comes up and it says, "Put in your salary." And when you enter your salary, it'll say how much you then qualify under the FLIS program. And as long as you are between 3,500 and 22,000, you getting something. The government is giving you uh, support if you're buying the house for the first time. So the FLIS can now be used to make up that shortfall on the bond. I can now raise that extra 100,000 from the FLIS program. And the other thing that FLIS is gonna do, it's gonna cover my cost, the cost of transferring the property, the cost of registering the property, the bond costs and the transfer fees can now come from the FLIS application. So just to go through that process again, I'm finding a property, I'm applying for a bond on the property, I check out what my, if I'm earning between two, three and a half thousand and 22,000, I know that I'm gonna get support from the government via the FLIS program. So I can now apply for FLIS, and I can get that subsidy, I can access that subsidy, so it can go into my bond to reduce my bond, or I can use it to, um, to pay my bond costs, my transfer costs. And up front on the application, when I'm talking to the estate agent, mm -hmm. I've got to write it into the deed of sale, into the after purchase, that I'm intending to take a, make a FLIS application to buy the, to acquire this property. I'm going to apply to, for FLIS to get the, 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 to get the subsidy to support me in making up the purchase price or to cover my cost. So that's a simple exercise, simple process of how we approach the first. I'm just going to uh, refer to Mark now. Mark, are there any questions that have come through on our, on our line? Uh, remember the WhatsApp, if you want a question, raise a question. The number is 64 536 
0614-104-9095. And that number will come directly through to us at Yet Radio Yesterafir during this program. And we're ready to answer your questions about home ownership and more particularly how to access the FLIS subsidy and, you know, the process that we to follow. So let's ask Mark if there's any listeners that are asking some questions there, Mark. Okay, Evan, we have Claudia. Claudia sent a message. Uh, she wants to know, can she include her elderly mother or, uh, or father as a dependent? Okay, so one of the criteria that we spoke about earlier, Mark, is that one of the things that you need to do to qualify for the FLIST is that if you were not married, if you're, not, if you're a single person, but you're living with dependents in that house, then you qualify for the FLISP. So, Marcus, so Claudia is asking us, can her aging mother or father that's living with, sorry, with them in the property, can they qualify as dependents? Yes, certainly. That's one of the criteria met, so we can tick that box. So if you've got young minor children that are living in the house, if you're taking care of your elderly parents, that all qualifies as dependents. So you've ticked that box. <laughs> okay, Mark, I okay. think that answers that question. <laughs> Thanks, Ivan. Is there anything else, Mark? That's and then we have uh, Marina, Ivan. Uh, Marina wants to know, uh, when applying for FLISP, uh, can she pay her transfer and bond cost uh, from the FLISP? Okay. And, and also uh, a home loan. Can oh. that be added to the home loan? Okay, so Marina's asking... Can she use the FLISP money to settle the attorney's accounts? Remember, last week in our program, we spoke about the transferring attorneys and the bond attorneys. And so now the question is, can I use this subsidy to pay that cost? So yes, certainly, that's what FLISP is there for, is to support you. Guys, many times we have buyers, youngsters starting out, um, people that are wanting to buy a property, they've saved for it, they've got the deposit, they can qualify now for the bond. But they don't have the money to cover the cost. They don't have that, 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 that you know, well, the attorney's fees for the transferring costs and the bond cost, the registration cost. They don't have that money. Now, FLISP is available to them to support them. In, and, if, you know, if you're getting 60,000, 70,000 rand from FLISP, depending on what your salary is and on the scale, if you're getting that 60,000, 70,000, you can put that money towards your cost and the, the balance can go into your bond, can reduce your bond, or as I said, it can make up the shortfall, the shortfall in the purchase price mark. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. Okay, guys, so this is the FLISP application. So, you know, where will I find FLISP? Where is this government department? Is it one of those uh, mystical bodies that you can never find? You're trying to find them and you, uh, you know, you're running all over town. Nobody's heard of them. No, they are at number 27 Whale Street. The offices are 27 Whale Street. The public are welcome to come in there. You're welcome to come and ask questions. You're welcome to find out, do I qualify with the criteria that, that has been set down? But easier today, you know, everything is online, everything is digital, so I can just go and Google Western Cape Government and I can, Human Settlements, Department of Human Settlements, I can go in there and I can type in there the FLISP application, Government Support Program for First-Time Buyers, and the table will come up. It will tell me what the criteria is, and if I put in my salary there, it'll tell me what I qualify for. I just want to do an ex uh, use an exercise for an example, Mark. Um, if, for example, you know, somebody, um, if we've got the tables here in front of us, if we, just to use an example, if I'm earning 5,000 rand a month, that's my income, Mark, what am I going to qualify for on the FLIS program if my income is 5,000 rand a month? So, Ivan, okay, if it's 5,000 a month, so... Uh, it's, it will start between 5,001 to 5,300. Um, so that is about 122,000. 122,000, guys. So if you're earning 5,000 rand a month, the government is going to assist you in purchasing a property to pay your, to make up the shortfall on your bond and to put the cost together. So you're going to qualify for 122,000. That's exciting news. It's one more reason to want you want to come to talk to Start Prop Shop Number Five um, in Row Center, opposite Pick and Pay, and we can assist you with your first application. We can assist you in finding your first house. We'll take you through the steps. Our agents are qualified, and they know exactly how to take you through the process of owning your own property and becoming a homeowner. And using the FLIS subsidy scheme that the government has made available to us, 
Can we take another example, Mark? Of a, if I'm earning 12,500, if I'm earning 12,500, so remember now, this income is the household income. That's the, if you, if you and your husband are buying together, or you are cohabiting, and the two of you are buying together as a partnership, and you have never owned property, eat, neither of you have owned property before, so it's the first time you're buying houses, you meet the criteria, and your combined salary is 12,500, Mark, how much are we going to qualify for? So we're basically looking at about 81,570 rand. Okay, guys, so you, you're going to get a subsidy of 81,000 plus uh, if you have an income of 12 and a half. So I'm earning 12 and a half thousand, for example. I want to go buy a property, so I'm going to go to the bank and I'm saying, look, I'd like to uh, buy this house. Um, what do I qualify for on my bond? And they're going to give me a qualification that I get what I can qualify for for my 12 and a half thousand. And the bank normally works on about 30% of your gross income. 30% as a rule of thumb. 30% of your gross income you're going to get on your bond. So obviously they're going to look at your affordability and all sorts of other issues that come into question when you're applying for a bond. So whatever the bank is going to give you and say, look, Mr. you know, you qualify for, for let's say 300 or 400,000 on your salary. And now you qualify for that other 81,000 rand from the FLIS subsidy. So I can take that subsidy, that 81,000, and I can say, right, I'm gonna pay 50,000 towards the purchase price, and I'm gonna take the other 30,000, and I'm gonna pay the costs of transfer, the cost, the legal fees, the attorney fees, I'm gonna pay with that other 30,000. So that's how I can use the FLIS subsidy to make up the shortfall on the purchase price, and also to pay the costs of the transfer of the registration. So. Again, people, we, the FLIS department, this human settlements that's giving the subsidy on 27 Whale Street. And, um, you know, somebody uh, asked me the other day, how long does this process take? How long does it take to implement, the, to, to once you know, is it gonna, am I going to wait three years? That's me and so be, wacht is 20 jaar, wacht hulle vir die huisne. 20 jaar, wacht hulle vir die government om vir die huisne gee. Now, is this going to take another 20 years to get the money from the government for the FLIS subsidy. So the answer is no, it's not going to take 20 years. The process of, of actually processing the paperwork, the paperwork part, if you've given them everything and there's a bit of paper they require, proof of your marriage or your marriage certificate, your IDs, they want to know proof of where are you staying, where your dependents are. If you have dependents, you've got to give some birth certificates or IDs of the children and your parents that are living with you. So they're asking us for supporting documents. So we take all the documents along. So to process all that paperwork, to put all the documents together, is taking about seven days. Seven days for them to work through all the paperwork. Then from there it goes to national government. And national government must approve the program, approve the scheme, approve the facility. And that process takes about 21 days. So in total, you know, you're looking at about uh, um, uh, 30 days, um, but now it's working days, so yeah, it's going to take a bit of time. But at least it's not taking a month of Sundays. I'm going to know relatively shortly that I'm going to be qualifying for the FLIS subsidy and how much I'm getting. And they've said, yeah, your, your application has been successful. Um, you've met the criteria, and this is what you're going to qualify for. And I can already know what I'm qualifying for, because that rate is fixed uh, based on what my earnings are, what my income is. Mark, is there any questions before we go back to another piece of music? Okay, so we have um, Ahmad. Okay, so Ahmad wants to know, uh, when applying f um, for FLISP, uh, does it happen before the offer is taken or after? Okay, so Ahmad, uh, the question is, you know, when must I lodge this application by the department? When must I process the application? Uh, do I do it now well, whilst I'm still looking or must I first go to the bank and then qualify? So the thing is, if I go online, I will know on my salary, I will qualify for X amount of this. I know more or less what I'm going to be getting. But the way I must process, handle the process is I must first go to the bank. I must first find the property. I'm going to come to start perhaps office talk to one of their very enthusiastic estate agents, qualified professional agents. They're going to find me a house. We're going to do the deal. 
I'm going to give that deal then to the bank. And on the offer to purchase, I'm going to say that I'm applying for the FLISP application. I'm going to apply for FLISP for the shortfall or for to cover my costs. So that must be written under the special conditions in your contract. So I'm going to apply for the, for the, for the I'm going to close the deal, sign the offer to purchase, go to the bank, get my bond. And then once that process is run its course, then I'm going to apply for the FLISP for the subsidy. So one of the things that FLISP will ask for is they're going to say to you, give us a copy of the offer to purchase. Give us a copy. Give us proof that the bank is going to give you a bond. So remember, they're not just going to give you the money out of hand to say, yeah, go and shop, go and spend. You must come to them and they're supplementing the bond. They're adding that FLISP to the bond or they're paying it into the transferring attorney's account to cover the costs of the registration of the transfer. So you first get the bond. Proof of the bond goes with your application. A copy of the of the offer to purchase that you're gonna which house you're gonna buy, what the price is, goes with the application. So that process that's the process mark as it unfolds. So guys, we're gonna take a short break now. I hope you guys are understanding all of the technical content we're dealing with today. And I'm hoping we 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 we're explaining it in a way that you can understand that you can become part of this home owning process. You can become part of owning your own property and having your own investment and your own asset. So the next local Cape Jazz artist that we're listening to is Ezra Nkunyana. And his, um, We Will Win is the, is the number that Ezra is going to be playing for us.
Farmer's Market offers the best quality, locally sourced and 100% halal meats. Visit our store at Sanbury Square Mall. Contact us at 021-565-04-9 TPM for your halal meats. Yes, Ezra and Konkana with We Will Win, local jazz artists. Guys, we're keeping it local today. This is Start Prop, the property show. And we're right here on Radio Easter Fear. On Stasi, on Talent, on Mensa. We are the biggest live streaming radio show in South Africa. And we're bringing you all the latest information regarding property and home ownership and how you can become a property owner. And today our topic is on FLISP, the government subsidy program, and how we can qualify for the FLISP program. So to everyone who's tuned into the show, and to everybody that you know, spread the word. If your income is below is between 3,500 and 22,000 rand a month, if you earn between that, you should be buying a house with a government subsidy, and with the support of a government subsidy. So remember this qualifying criteria, you've got to have a job, you must be earning. You must first apply to the bank for a bond and the FLIS subsidy will support that, will add to your what the bank is giving you and can also be used to pay your costs, the transfer and the legal fees. And we can qualify for up to 130,000 rand that the government will give us to cover our costs or to make up the shortfall on the bond. So the process, as, as we explained to Ahmad, was first apply, first do the deal, get the agent to come out, sign up the deal, and then apply for the bond, and I've got to give them a copy of the bond approval, I've got to submit that, I've got to submit the offer to purchase, the deed of sale, uh, and also they will see the attorney costs, who's going to be registering, who's gonna be, what attorney is going to be dealing with this, and that will all um, accompany the application. So, you know, there are various people that can also assist you in doing the FLISP application, obviously, at Start Prop, shop number five, at Rose Center, we will support you. If you come into our offices and say, I'd love to buy a property, I'd like to use this FLISP application, how can I do the FLISP? Can you guys assist me in uh, doing the FLISP application? So we're very happy to support you in finding your property in doing your bond application, in qualifying you, how much you can qualify for, for your bond, and then we will assist you in doing the FLISP application. We've also got attorneys that will uh, you know, assist you, in, and, and they will do it on your behalf, do the FLISP application on your behalf. Alternatively, you, as I said, you can go to the office at 27 Wales Street in town, uh, where you will meet the people, and you know the thing is live, and I've explained to you the process, and how long it takes to get the FLIS subsidy um, and to get the approval letter so that, you know, the seller also wants to know that you've put in an offer to purchase, you didn't make the full bond, you didn't get the full price, but you are applying for FLIS, and he wants to know, right, did you get the subsidy or not? Are you, are you, are you, is the deal fast? Is the deal fast? Is the thing going ahead? So they all want to know how that is proceeding. Uh, Mark, any other questions that have come through there before we move on? Uh, we've got one here, Ivan. This one is from Danny. So Danny wants to know what happens uh, when there's no money in FLISP. Uh, does the bond application that you did or the, the approval that you got, does, does that process end right there or does it have to wait? Okay, so Danny is asking a very important question here. So the FLIS subsidy comes from national government and gets allocated to all the different provinces. And it, it's allocated on a first come, first serve basis. So if you come, <coughs> sorry, if you come and apply for FLISP and you're at the end of the food chain, they've already given out all the money, they've done a full allocation for the current year. And now you're standing in the queue, but you're right at the back of the queue because let's say the money that they got for, from national is now spent then what they're going to do is they're going to advise you that you, your application, whilst it was approved, so remember your application was approved, but now they don't have the funds to, to release and to pay out under the FLIS program. So what will happen is 
that your application will now be pending till the next allocation of funds. So when the next tranche of funds comes from national government, you're going to be in the queue and your money will then be released uh, in that application. So, you know, we can speak of experience here. Um, at StartProp, we've had a few applications where clients have lodged the application very late in the year, very late in the government's financial year, and they had already made all the allocations in that financial period. And so our clients had to wait, I think it was another four months or five months had to go by and for that new tranche of funds to come from national and then their money was released to them. So yes, it's going to take an extra long, uh, extra period of time because you're now waiting for the next allocation of funds to come for the next financial year. And so the government has a financial year end and they have to spend all their money in that year and then there's an allocation of funds that come for the next financial year and so you're going to be in that food chain and your money's going to come with the next tranche mm -hmm. of funds. Mm -hmm. So you're not falling out of the system. It's not like you just have to start the whole thing all over again. They're going to pin the application and say, look guys, you were approved, but there's no funding. We've already spent the money. It's on a first come, first serve basis here. And your application came in at the time when they'd already made all the allocations. Thanks, Evan. Is there anything else there, Mark, that's coming through? Uh, then we have one more. Uh, this comes from Brenda. Brenda wants to know, uh, what happens uh, when the FLISP uh, application is is dealt with um, through the attorneys? Uh, is there a cost that needs to be paid? Or Okay, so there is a question from, uh, from Brenda, and she's saying, um, I've done the deal, and remember people, when you're applying for the FLISP, write it into the... Write it into the deed of sale. Write it into the contract that this su offer is subject to FLISP. And so here you have attorneys that are now doing the FLISP application on your behalf. So some attorneys will charge you a fee. They do charge you an administration fee to process your application, uh, which you have to pay uh, to them. Alternatively, as I said, you can do your own application. Um, you can also come to start perhaps offices, and we will also assist you with that application. But you do have attorneys that, are, are, that do charge you an administrative cost to do the FLISP. And normally they have somebody in their office or they find there's somebody that works with those firm of attorneys and all that person does is do FLISP applications. So she walks the application, she'll get all the required documents from you, she'll go up and down, whatever is needed to complete the FLISP application. She will complete all that on your behalf or you, on, you will do it on your behalf and they will probably charge you a small fee to do all that on your behalf. So then you have to pay that costs. Uh, but as I said, come to start prop. We are, we are in opposite pick and pay. We will assist you with all of that. We'll give you the information. We'll tell you what you need to qu qualify. Uh, we'll find you the property, we'll do the deed of sale, and walk you through the process. If you are a first-time buyer, if you're buying us for the first time and you meet the qualifying criteria, then why not? Why not, you know, make use of that facility? I think what's important is that, you know, if you have not put the information on the deed of sale, if it's not in the offer to purchase and you've now gone to the bank and you've bought a, um, a property mm -hmm. and you've taken the, you've got a bond for the property and now you discover that, you know, somebody didn't tell you that you needed costs and now you discover, oh my gosh, I'm buying a house for the first time. I didn't know I qualified for the FLISP. Nobody spoke to me. I, my estate agent didn't advise me like Start Prep is advising you today. My agent didn't tell me I can qualify for FLISP. If I'm earning between three and a half and 22,000, that the government will support me um, with a purchase price and they will support me with paying costs. So if you're going to be doing the, uh, the FLISP application and you want to enter that application and you didn't put it in the deed of sale, then we're going to have to... Some, uh, if there's a bond, we're going to have to re-lodge that to the bank and tell the bank, this application is now a FLISP application. This client is not paying the cost out of their own pocket. This application is now going to, the client is now going to go to FLISP and apply for the cost. So that, that changes the credit profile of the client with a bank and they, they want you to sometimes resubmit the deal. And the problem is that if you're reapplying for your bond, what happens if the interest rate in the meanwhile went up? What happens if there was a, a half a percent or a 0.75% increase in the bond? 
And now that same bond that you qualified for before you did the uh, thought of doing the FLISP application, that bond is now costing you more. And you may not qualify for that bond. You may not, um, because of the interest rate, the way the interest went up, the payment is more and I don't now uh, qualify. So I had a bond of 500000 I didn't mention in my, in my uh, deed of sale, in the contract when I bought the house, that I'm applying for FLISP. Now the interest rate has gone up. I bought a bond for the 500000 I qualified. The interest rate went up sub subsequently. And if I must reapply, I can't get that bond. I'm now only qualifying for 490000 or 487000 because of the adjustment in the interest rate. So the risk you run is that you, will, you may now be sitting without a bond because you will not qualify if you reapply. And so we, that's why I'm saying rather come and talk to a professional estate agent that knows what they're doing and give you the right advice and see that that wording is in the contract because we can't add it later on. It's going to have consequences uh, when we try and change the information at the later stage. So guys, um, just to talk again to wrap up on this FLISP application. So to qualify for the FLISP, to qualify for the scheme, to, um, and we know that government is saying that they will make a sum of money available up to 130,000, in fact, 130,505 rand that they will allocate to a particular buyer for a property. And to qualify for that money, you need to earn between 3,500 and 22,000 rand a month. The less you earn, the more the subsidy will be. So they are really supporting those that are most in need. Those that really need it are getting the biggest allocation of the grant. If I'm earning 22,000, then I'm getting the least amount from the subsidy. Okay, so it's there to support those who really can't support themselves. So that's the first criteria, is that you are working and that you're earning an income, at least that income. So if you're earning less than 3,500, you do not qualify under the FLISP program. If you're earning more than 22,000 combined salary, you do not qualify for the FLISP. If you're a single mother, if you're a single parent, and you have dependents, you qualify for the FLISP, okay? You must be a South African citizen, you must be over the age of 18, and you must be either married or cohabiting, or a single person with, with dependents who would rely on you for financial support, okay? And then you haven't had a government subsidy before, you, and you have not owned a house, so I've never applied for a subsidy before. It's my first time I'm applying for a subsidy, and I've not owned property before. Then I meet the criteria. I can apply to the government, and I can get that subsidy. And so I'm going to first find the property, go to the bank, get the bond, and I can then make up the shortfall on the price or pay the transfer costs and fees from that money. Okay, so that is, in a nutshell, the FLIS program and the subsidy that government supports first-time buyers. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. I hope you've got some information, relevant information, um, regarding home ownership, purchasing property, and particularly people that are entering the housing market for the first time and want to become buyers and there's a support scheme, there's a support structure, there's a subsidy that government will give. So this is the Start Pro Property Show. Uh, we've come to the end of another hour. It's been so uh, fantastic to share with you, to be part of you, and just to you know explain, give some knowledge. We were happy we could answer some questions. I see there's some more questions coming through. We'll attempt to answer those questions uh, you know, during the course of the day, during the course of the week. So uh, keep sending the questions through to 064. 536-9095 or just come and chat to us. Come and have coffee with us um, at shop number five in the Rose Center. And then before we close the program, I just want to say that on the 21st of June, next month, 21st of June, it's a, it's a Wednesday and we'll be offering a new training course for estate agents. Anybody who wants to become an estate agent if you want to learn about the business of making money in real estate, in property, if you want to enrich your knowledge, you want to enrich your information about real estate. So if you want to become an estate agent and want to know about real estate, um, we're offering a free course over 12 weeks. It will be 12 Wednesdays, and we're starting on the 21st of June next month. So make contact with us 
and um, you can you can also get us online www.startprop.com and uh, make contact with us at the office we're happy to um, to receive you so we are taking on new recruits new agents new people who want to learn about property even if you're not wanting to be an agent but you want to understand the marketplace the buying selling and investments of property so if you want to get involved in the real estate we're offering a free course for 12 weeks uh, to be offered between 9 and 11 o'clock on a Wednesday morning, uh, starting on the 21st of June, and you're welcome. But please let us know that you would like to come. Uh, we'll chat about that more next week. So to end the show today, a local jazz artist that needs no introduction is Errol Dyers, and he will be playing out with Sinesta. I think we can all know Sinesta is, ne? So Errol Dyers is a home, is a, a son of the Cape Flats, of the soil of the Cape Flats. Guys, it has been brilliant with you. Start prop the property show um, right here on Radio Easterfeer, and we hope you've enjoyed the program as much as we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for being with us. Yeah.